huge news. I cannot believe it. China has finally opened up. Time to celebrate. Or is it? Yo, what up guys? I'm Luke. I am a PhD student in Shanghai, China. And before that, I was an epidemiologist, so I would study outbreaks of viruses such as COVID. So I thought this video would be very topical for me to talk about. So yeah, what's all the big fuss about China recently in the news? So for the first two years of the pandemic, wow, guys, it was really free. There was no COVID at all, basically, in China. Like, I didn't know a single person who caught COVID. There were no restrictions. I mean, I hardly had to do any testing unless I traveled places. But, you know, life was really great, whereas the rest of the world, they were in strict lockdowns. 2022, though, it all changed. COVID cases rose and rose as, you know, we had this Omicron variant, really, really transmissible. And if you caught COVID, ah, you know, bad luck. You'd be sent off to one of those quarantine centers. So for the whole of 2022, we'd have to be testing basically every other day just to get into places like the supermarket or any shopping centers. And then like that, bam, I just can't believe it. A total U-turn in China. All of these restrictions relaxed. No more need for testing at all. No need to scan or have any of these codes to enter places. And even if you have COVID, by all means, you can go to work because there's no quarantine rules anymore. People are now able to come into China. China is officially open. And for some, that might be great news. But of course, that means COVID is absolutely everywhere in China now. Honestly, all of my friends have caught COVID. And so what we're seeing is many countries have set a requirement for a negative COVID test if you've flown from China, you know, such as the US, the UK, Australia, which you know I just think is absurd because if you haven't got COVID on arrival, you're certainly going to get it if you're walking around these countries. Because in the UK, we've got one in 40 people having COVID right now. That means a million people are, are getting COVID every single day week and there are zero restrictions you, know, you don't need to wear a mask at all in the uk nobody wears masks there is zero restrictions so i really don't get why they put these restrictions from china when you know there's no restrictions inside the country it's, yeah it's just all political to be honest and you know the uk healthcare system is really bad at the moment it's really difficult to book any kind of hospital appointments we've seen in the news that people have had to wait over 16 hours just to get an ambulance to go to hospital. You know, they're in critical care, critical need. They just can't go. And there are many rumors about China having the same problem, that the hospitals are just too overfilled, no one can get treated, and so millions of people are dying from COVID. Is that true? Well, you know, not really. Hospitals, they are really busy, but actually, if you have COVID, you're encouraged to go to one of these COVID clinics. So there have been an abundance of these COVID clinics built all around the country. And that's really helped relax the stress on the healthcare system in China. And at the first couple of days, it was really difficult to get medicine. That is true, but only for literally a couple of days, because of course, people are gonna panic, they're gonna overbuy. But now what we're seeing is there's a lot of stock and people are now able to get the medicine. So yeah, people can get treated, people can go to these clinics and yeah, it's no problem at all. However, even though all of these restrictions have been canceled, people are still scared of the virus. Everyone is still wearing masks, even more so than they did before. People will self-isolate if they've got a fever, if they think they might even have COVID, they'll still isolate for a week. Whereas in the UK, in other countries, what you find is people have COVID, they don't care, they'll go to work. I literally know people like this. They'll go to work if they have COVID. I just think it is absolutely crazy. And that's one of the reasons why I think China can manage COVID, even it is quite bad at the moment. Now, most people in Western countries, they just think COVID is exactly the same as a flu or a cold. I've even got friends who just say COVID does not exist. And I know people like that. They say, oh yeah, it doesn't exist. It's just in your head. The reason, well, people get their information from the media and the media, they do have an agenda, whether you like it or not. They know that people are kind of tired and bored of COVID news. 
it was literally in the news every single day for a couple of years. People are fed up of it now. They don't want to listen to it on the news. And so you never hear about it. And therefore, people think COVID has disappeared. But the truth is, it's as worse as it's ever been. And the reason that COVID is not a flu is because the flu has been around for generations. We've built up so much immunity to it. We've not really built up that much immunity to COVID in the grand scheme of things. COVID is still a very, very new virus. It still possesses risks. Just by looking at the mortality rate, COVID is much more dangerous than the flu. And people will argue, most people will get mild symptoms right now with this variant of COVID. That is true, very true. You're very likely to get mild symptoms if you're young and healthy, even maybe if you're quite old, you might just get mild symptoms. And you know, I'm not too scared of the symptoms. There are some which are quite bad, you know, like parosmia, phantosmia, where you have the, the lack of smell and taste. But the thing I am most scared of are the long-term effects. That's something which is just not covered about at all in the news. So honestly, if, if you're trying to research this, please, 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 don't just go on BBC or CNN. Don't learn about COVID from there. Read peer-reviewed scientific journals, and then I guarantee your minds will change about COVID because it is getting worse and worse, scarier and scarier. We've known for a long time that COVID you know, primarily affects the lungs. However, there's a lot of new research coming out this year where it actually affects other organs, particularly actually the brain. So I'll put some links in the uh, description below, but we can see that it can affect brainstem nuclei. It can cause more gray matter in the brain, and it can also damage many T cells. So I genuinely think in about five, 10 years time, the healthcare system is just gonna be really bad. Like, honestly, the long-term effects of COVID is getting worse and worse, and we will find that out very soon. And so the best way, well, there are two best ways, actually. First of all, wear a mask. I wear a mask absolutely everywhere. I'm in the UK right now. Nobody wears masks, but you know, I'll be wearing it all the time. Get a mask that is efficient, you know, effective. I wear an N95 mask. That's proven to be one of the best. Secondly, try to get vaccinated. You know, people will say, Yeah, you're vaccinated four times? You're wearing a mask? Why are you scared of getting COVID then? So at the beginning, when you have your vaccine, you produce a lot of antibodies and this does help you stop getting COVID. But after a little while, your antibodies in your system will be like, hey, you know, there is no COVID here. What's the point? We'll just go up. And so they kind of like disappear. And so you get less and less antibodies. And so your immunity does wane over time. The primary reason though, is that vaccination just helps reduce the severity of your symptoms. And it should in turn reduce the severity of the long-term symptoms as well. And many people say to me, hey Luke, come on, you know, COVID is getting weaker and weaker. You know, it's just like the flu now. No, not at all. It does get slightly weaker, but having said that, it gets smarter and smarter. Viruses are so good at adapting. And one of the things that we've noticed recently in research is that COVID can hide. It can be invisible from your own immune system. So it goes into your body, it's not able to be detected. And so even if you think you're immune from a recent COVID infection or vaccination, you know, be a little bit guarded. You might still get COVID because it's becoming more cleverer. So still wear a mask. And so what the virus does is it hides in certain parts of the body and it turns off the alarm system in your body. So your body alarm system is what calls all of the antibodies to come rescue you. It makes you have a high fever and to fight against the virus. So that's why we get quite a few people who are asymptomatic because you get the virus hiding and it copies and copies and copies, reproduces until there's so much of it inside your body. And you know, you're gonna be really contagious still. You're gonna be passing it on without knowing. So that's why everyone needs to be still testing. Even if you think you don't have COVID, you might have it. And so when you get your vaccine, you'll get it in your arm, right? And then what happens is that the antibodies go throughout your body. They'll mainly go to your lungs. However, the antibodies, there are very few of them that go to your upper airways and your nose. And so COVID can hide there and that's where it can turn off your body alarm. So something which China has done very recently is that they have implemented this 
COVID oral vaccine. I've only seen China and India do this at the moment, which is just so clever. And I think it's a really good way to stop infections. And so I really don't know why other countries have failed to adopt this because I think it's a great technique. And so for all of these reasons, you know, people in China, they're more health conscious. They are more likely to self isolate. They're more likely to wear face masks. They have the oral vaccine. I think this is why China can keep up with this virus and it won't be as bad and there won't be as many deaths as we've seen in some Western countries. And so the key point of this video is, you know, whether you're in China or you're anywhere else in the world, wear a face mask. You know, I know it might be a bit awkward, embarrassing if nobody else wears it in, around, but just if you're in any busy places, try to wear one. Better for you, it's better for society. And a lot of people will say, Hey, you know, I've just recovered from COVID a couple weeks ago. I'm immune for three months, right? Well, not necessarily. You might be immune to the current variant in society, but that quickly changes, that quickly evolves. There might be a new variant you might not be immune to. Having said all of this, I really don't think it is all doom and gloom because I think we are around a year or so from ending COVID as we know it. That is right. And there is research to suggest this. Literally last month in December, Cambridge University have found a drug which might be able to cure COVID. So basically, COVID attaches to one of these proteins called ACE2 when it goes into to your system. And these researchers at Cambridge, they were able to turn off this ACE2 protein. And so they did a trial with hamsters because actually rats can't get COVID. So they did it with hamsters. And they found, yeah, it was successful. It works. It stops COVID. And so the next step is to do a clinical trial with humans. And you know, I am really optimistic. I do think there are positive signs there that COVID will go, it will pack its bags. So we just have to cross our fingers and you know, hope that the research works. So you guys, that is the end of the video. A little bit of a different one. Hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new possibly and take care. See you guys next time.